a, a beat or two for people to be able to log on. I call this my tap dancing uh, section. <laughs> so I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I know in the oddest way, I certainly did. There we go. My mom was absolutely 100 and 100 million million percent that she did not want any sort of funeral or anything like that. So this weekend we had a belated birthday party for her. She would have been 95 last Tuesday. And we did everything in Grandma D style. Any way she would have set her table or whatever I did. We, we got Mexican food. <coughs> Joey came up with the girls. And then up here, the kids didn't know they were coming. So they almost, you know, had a heart attack when they saw their cousins. And I, Shelly stayed home. Joey goes, why don't you want her there? I said, I'm trying to give her a gift. <laughs> Let her stay home. So she was, she goes, I feel guilty, but I'm taking you up on it. Guys, I'm gunning to be the world's best mother-in-law. And what you do is you think about your daughter-in-law first, right? So she was real cute. I texted her and I said, so what are you going to do? And she said, whatever I want to do, I haven't been alone in my house for nine years. <laughs> can moms, can we all relate to that? So it was my immediate family. And then I had two outsiders. I had Kathleen who lived across the street from my mom for 30 something years. And she kind of adopted them as parents, which was just lovely. And then I had Robin and who has shepherded me through all of this. She, her, she had a business called Senior Living or Senior Solution. She has since retired, but out of her shepherding me through the whole experience, I gained a very special friend. She's a quilter. That, oh, and so is Kathleen. See, I know, I know who to hang out with. So then we had a sleepover on Saturday night. Uh, Joey and the girls came up Saturday morning. They flew. The airport was like nobody was there. I mean, nobody. Going home, it wasn't like that. They went home Sunday evening. I was so exhausted, people. I was in bed probably, I always joke that I go to bed at 7.30, but I usually do about 7.30 or 8. I was probably in bed at 7 o'clock. Just pooped out. Oh, Italy. Cool, Helen. So thank you. I just, I just so appreciate this time together. And today, actually, I'm going to be showing what my almost always go-to way to do finished applique. But first, you're starting to post things on backgrounds, and I think that that is fabulous. So this is Monicures, and she, I believe, said she was up in Canada, and she has in like total lockdown, so she had to pull green from her stash, which I think is great. That's fabulous. Use up your stuff. I have so much fabric, it's disgusting. So then, uh, sky, sky Rising, oh, that's what that is. Sky Rising chose to do something completely different with her little triangles, and I think this is just fabulous. And I'm gonna be curious, uh, Sky Rising, if you're going to turn it 45 degrees, and so in other words, have the dirt on the ground, and then green, and then sky. My guess is you are. And it will no longer be horizontal, but who cares? Because look what Helen, Helen is back to it again. Let's take a look at this. You can do it vertical. There's no reason you can't. It just doesn't matter, all right? Then, I'm never gonna learn that program, but I do appreciate, Helen, when you put up these other options for people. Here it is now with blues and greens. So, I mean, this is a stash buster for sure. So please feel free to use your own stuff and all that. Now, somebody wrote and said they missed out on buying the bundle. And could we please give them exactly what we bought? And the fact of the matter is Kristen got it to me and Mary Kay is uplifting it, or up, up, uplifting it, uploading it on the website so you can go look at, I don't know, I'm not even quite sure who we got the fabric from, but it's all, here it is. 
Uh, it's from Robert Kaufman Colors, and this is going to be on the page somewhere, okay? So, you know, it, within that project area. Also, if you can't find it, you go to cre create, oh shoot, I don't know. Anyways, it, you go to create, and then you go to projects, then you find it, then you click it, and you scroll down to the bottom of the page. I know that this site is, is it projects? I'll put it up, it's learn projects. Oh, it's learn and then projects, John will put it up. Uh, this, the site that we're working on right now is so old and it is crippling along. And as you know, we keep promising the new site and it's always next week, next week, next week. But we really are on the home stretch. And one of the things you're going to love about it is the searchability on the whole thing. So that is very, very exciting. And we can just see it. I mean, it is so old. So we get it. We know it. In fact, someone said, can you change the front page, and I think she's talking about the login where I've got the things on my head that the Southwest flight attendant told me I had to wear the whole time I was in Houston, and if she caught me without it, I'd be in big trouble. So yes, it's old and we have a new one on the new site and all that. I so appreciate how you love this site as your own because truly it is your own. And this is just an offshoot of thequiltshow.com. So when you find that spot, you can print out the pattern, the instructions for the for the page. For I'm Alex, focus, <laughs> focus for the background. And I shared that I sewed the pinwheels on before I started applicating because when you applicate, things shrink up. Somebody else said, well, why don't you just cut it all a little bit bigger, like an inch bigger? Well, yeah, if I had thought about that. So that's why my back was in that corner. You can certainly make the background a little bit bigger and trim it down once the applique has happened. That's what a smart person would have done. Then the other thing is you'll print out is this, and then you'll tape it all together. Kristen did a really great job on that. All right, and I'm encouraging everybody to just cool their jets on getting started or like say the, take the petals, try one technique, try another technique, try another technique, and then find out what works for you. So I did what I shared last Friday for my finished applique for a really long time and it was the spray starch method and I loved it until I wrote that book and I ended up with tendonitis, all right? And it was from pressing down so hard on that iron. We were going to road to California to vend for the quilt show and John said I had to do something. It's so people come in, you know, real in. And he said he wanted me to try Rosa Rojas ways, the Appliquick way. And I'm like sitting there and go, no, I don't want to learn one more thing. How many of you feel that way? No, I can't do it. And he said, well, you, you have to do it. Okay. And I sat there and I made circle after circle after circle here. I'll show you after circle. And then within 15 minutes, I was completely hooked. All right. Oh, sparrows up here checking around. So I ended up making this quilt out of it. So yeah, someone's coming here and this is finished applique. Let me get it in here. It's been done. Well, you know what? When I turn on the thing over here, the other camera, I'll show you. And it was done finished applique. Now, somebody also wrote in the comments, could you please show us how to sew it down? No, not yet. Because number one, I don't want you sewing it down until you have your complete composition done. Kind of like when we did the faces, you had to play with it. And number two, that's a whole thing in itself. So I'm not going to jimmy back and forth. I'm going to go through different ways to prepare applique and then raw edge and, and different ways to do that. And then we'll get into how to actually sew it down. So sorry about that. I don't mean to be a bad guy, but I guess I am right now. So let's go over to here. Okay, I wanna get rid of you. And I wanna pull a document camera up. There we go. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna then Bring it in focus. That's machine applique. You can kind of see it on the blue, the turquoise, 
but on this it's just gone and I believe I was playing with some shot cottons that we have in the store which I adore so I am going to show you the Rosa Rojas ways the Apple quick way and I would love for you to give it a try I gotta move my little body so what the first thing I did was I cut out all my little templates with template plastic all right you if you don't have template plastic in your life you just need to get some here I hit hit it with an iron and it melted there are some that are uh, heat proof so that wouldn't have happened I, I know how I got this stuff I bought it off a store because I was desperate and I bought the whole bunch and I didn't even care what kind it was but I love this stuff and you just you know trace on it with your felt tip pen and draw it out here's the medium leaf here's the large leaf and then these are the three tools you're going to need for this you're going to need print and piece fuse light you're going to need the fabric glue stick it will not work if you use like uh, Elmer's glue or something like that there are three different colors of glue stick out there there is yellow there's a pink one and there's a blue one my preferred color is yellow its origins were from charisma japan and it act, it works the best it plays the best so when we went to do the fabric glue stick i was having a really hard time getting the charisma in the united states in fact it was darn near impossible and it's i believe what rosa was originally using also and I said, we have to do, I think yellow, but I called Jenny Beyer. She's one of my gurus. And I said, what color? And she said, oh, absolutely the yellow. Now this has good news and bad news. If it wasn't for the glue thing, I would just do raw edge. Roxanne said, yeah, right? But the other thing you have to consider too is what's gonna happen to this quilt you know is it gonna hang on the wall is it gonna be used a lot is it for competition I mean there's just so many things you have to think about when you're doing this so this has good news bad news the good news is that it dries very very quickly the bad news is that it dries very very quickly so every time you take a pass of it you have to close it now the other thing is this print and piece fuse light has a dull side and it has a shiny side the shiny side is what you will the shiny look who's coming across the screen <laughs> sorry no I, let's just see if she sits down sparrow <laughs> sorry cat <laughs> off you go the what i do is because the smaller the pieces get like you could roll this through your go and get circles or your sizzix the smaller it gets the harder it is to see the shiny so when it's a big piece of paper i'll take my friction pin and i just go like that on it and then that way when i cut it out i know which is the dull and which is the shiny so i'm going to do the little birdie today is what i'm going to do i am going to on the dull side trace it you know these pins you're warned not to use on fabric and this and that so true but I gotta move my chair too I don't like working crooked but it has wonderful applications like this so now what I'm, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out the birdie this is kind of like how I did the freezer paper on Friday or yeah Friday and I'm going to exactly cut my little birdie out and however it's cut out is how it's going to be so if you have a sloppy cutout you're going to have a sloppy thing going on get up here i'm going to do a red bird right now i love this in january we have red and yellow birds in our backyard i love to i love my birds we have a fountain for them and then we have a feeder for them. So what I, let me bring over my iron right now. When I'm working over here, I work with my Aliso. When I'm working by my machine, I use my Panasonic because I can use it on my wall. So what I'm gonna do is, the, I know this is, oh, this is the dull side. You're gonna have to trust me on that. 
No, I bet I need to bring this in focus. I'm going to take my fabric. I was when you're holding my iron, I don't want to put it down on my cutting mat. And I am going to position it like this on the bias, and I don't know why, but I am. I'm going to iron it down. It just takes a second or two. Iron back over there. Take my little scissors. And I'm going to cut out just like we did on Friday. Oh, these scissors are shot. You know, I tell you, I love scissors. I can't have enough scissors. Now, what's going to happen ultimately is you're going to leave this product in and it basically washes out and, and breaks down because it is not paper. Why, John, why are you in here? I think you need to pull this up just a little bit because it's very much paper. Okay. I told him he's allowed to come in if it's an emergency and I guess that is an emergency. So I'm going to cut around. I didn't get to see Dee's class on Saturday. I'm gonna to have to go back and watch it because that's when all the chaos was starting. But we have really exciting news if you didn't watch or if you watched, I think she told you. So these are the little uh, Karen K. Buckley's. And what I'm gonna do is right down here, I'm gonna cut in to almost the product. I'm gonna take a little bit of this out and a little bit of this out. You want it just less than a quarter of an inch. And then wherever there's like an indentation, again, little cuts. And then let me turn this up. I'm taking my time to do the whole thing today. I thought that would be prudent. It's here. And I need a red bird too. I have a cut here no not yet all right so where did my other rosa tool go i had it right here there it is oh hold on oh john just found it okay now one thing you're going to find with these tools is that you pick it up and and one side you have two things going on here let me bring this up and then I'll, again i'll refocus you have two things going on here. One has a little, like a little snake tongue, okay? And then the other has a little bevel. And these are the two things I'm gonna be working with. On this end, there are two different stiletto type things. On the snake one, it's a little bit tinier than the beveled one. Every single time I pick it up, I always have, I start with the wrong end, so I put a little duct tape here and this one fell off so that I just know when I pick it up to pick up and let the little flag be on the end. So now where'd my glue go? Okay, here we go. I know John says it's there, but I got to get this down closer so you can really see. All right. Okay, so I'm going to start where it's easy to do. And what you'll do is you'll open this up. You'll go like this. And you can close it. You can hand applique this and or machine applique this. And then using the little bevel, I go like this. See, because it dries so quickly, it sticks down. But because it dries so quickly, I do not go all the way around. Oh, that's a little rhyme for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. Actually, I think I'm gonna do the tippy tips first. So how I do that is I just put the little yellow glue. See, I just did it again because my stupid flag fell off. I'm gonna go like this. Okay. John's coming in with notes. I'll answer them after. I've gotta pay attention. And then this, okay. Then I'm gonna go, thank you, on each side. We have a whole show with Rosa, by the way. And I think it's free. Oh yeah, John, it's a free show. She turns things less than the size of an eraser on an end of a pencil. Bringing that in. Okay. Like 
Okay, so I'm folding this in. You know, and the reason you would want these little tools is because if you were doing this by hand, you just couldn't. If you do the spray starch method now, this is not a big stretch. If you don't, it takes a little bit of coordination. Now, if I want to make these a little more pointy, I can just get in here and give it a little pull with the end or just finesse it a little bit more. I'm not gonna waste time on that, but you can get the sharpest point on the face of the earth. And, and I, have, I have stage fright. <laughs> The kids really hung out a lot in my sewing room and I have all my art supplies and they're old enough now to understand that they can use them if they are very careful. So I didn't get that in there. They could play with my Poscas. The only thing I won't let them play with are my watercolors because I know that would be a freaking disaster. And they made little art when our little dinner party was going on. They made art. And then I got more cherries from Capsules. Oh, I was wrong. It's their orchards. I thought it was somebody else's orchard. It's their orchards. And we had cherry pie for dessert. I hesitated to get on the scale this morning with good reason. <laughs> Mexican food and cherry pie. Oh, and deviled eggs. She loved deviled eggs. Now, I'm going to talk here now, and I'm going to do this again when we're doing circles. Notice when I'm going around a curve, I'm not going all the way to the edge. That's really important, you guys. Oh, I got yelled at for saying you guys. That's really important, people. You go like this. Okay. Then when I see that I love this curve, then I go back and... Okay, I'm going to do the tip. This one I'm going to try and get, I'm going to try and do well. Just fold it over. Whoops. Okay, Alex, you can do it. I know you can do it. So unlike when I do the iron, I'm not exerting a ton of pressure because the glue's doing its job. I'm gonna nail it. Oops, here I gotta roll that over. I'm gonna nail it, nail it, nail it, nail it. I did it. That's pretty darn good, you guys. Home stretch. And then just up here. So what happens is, is you leave this in, because I think I said that earlier, but I want to reiterate it. Because it is a fiber, it is meant to wash out. We tell people it washes out 60%. Honestly, people, it washes out, oh gosh, I'd say 80%. It just goes away. It also breaks down too. It naturally breaks down. Okay, so there's my little, my little birdie. And now that it looks so good, good like right in here I will go so I fold the tip in yes and then I came in on each side that's how I did it let me iron it there there she is let me tell you something that happened because this is very important for you to know so you don't freak out all right this one I did the spray starch way okay Th these I did the applistic way. As it starts to break down, this is going to get kind of crunchy. Not crunchy, it's just going to get kind of weird. And all you have to do is go and iron it out. When the whole thing is quilted, you can then wash it or you can, uh, it'll, it, it will naturally break down over time. Not go away, but it will break down and get very, very soft like a fiber because it is a fiber. So, Floor. So a couple things happen over here with that when I did the spray start now yeah the spray starch way to me it got a little sloppy all right it'll be fine when it's quilted it'll be fine but in here uh, it got a little crinkly but it'll be fine it's just the process of the whole thing all right 
So let's see what questions we have here. Oh, look what John brought in. We made two of these. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. I don't even care about the crust. I, those cherries are so good. Can you print in? Can you can you print the templates on Quilter Select paper instead of plastic template? Yeah, you can. You can. That which is great. I would use a uh, John, which is the one that doesn't get hot. I know you can do it on both of them, but. I think I have an inkjet and it's fine. Oh, one thing that does happen that I, I need to warn you, because this stuff isn't exactly cheap. I mean, it's not super expensive, but it's not cheap. Because, because it's fiber, you, if, if I put layer these and run them through the printer, this guy will grab the one that's underneath and start to pull it through. So I do load them in one at a time. And that's really important. I know there's settings you can do and stuff, but just do one at a time and you'll be fine. You can also, again, run it through any of your digital cutters, your Go, your Sizzix, whatever. Like for circles, it is it is fabulous. Yes, Sandy, sour cherry. Okay, so Sandy, if you want a sour cherry pie, you go to Kepsel's in Sister Bay and they will ship it all made and ready to go. Okay, let's see. Do you have to wash it? No, you don't have to wash it. No, I don't usually wash wall hangings. No, you don't have to. Just iron it really good before you go and quilt it. All right. So before uh, it prints ours well. Yeah, I think it it just depends your printer. It just depends all of that. All right. And this is a moving target applique is. It's not like one size fits all. All right. It just isn't. You've got to figure out what to do for what. Germany, do you guys know how happy this makes me feel to see all you guys here from all, I'm not supposed to say guys, you people, <laughs> you people from all over. Okie doke. So I want to talk a little bit about what's coming up. Do you still want to wash the quilt fabric correct? You know, Carmen, that is a personal choice. I guess I would recommend for people to wash fabric just because. Do I always? No, I'd be my pants would be on fire. How far ahead do you prepare the appliques? Can you? Can you? A year. I mean, I don't know. You, you can. You can. They don't. It doesn't come undone. Okay. It all prepares. It all. I mean, these little birds have been sitting around now probably since Christmas just because life got in the way, right? So, all right. D is doing you all or y'all. <laughs> I can't say, I can't say y'all. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I can say dudes. <laughs> like server dudes because I'm from California. <laughs> Oh, this is just great. You know, surely it is easy. You just have to relax. The biggest tip I gave you, and I will continue to give, give you, is when you roll it over, don't go all the way to the raw edge. You will get like V's and stuff like that. Slow down. It took me not even 15 minutes. It probably took me 10 minutes. But then again, I did come from the school of doing it with spray starch. So that gave me a leg up. So, here we so <laughs> D has been knocking it out of the ballpark with her classes. She she is not well she is she is nationally known now and she, or internationally known now and she will as as she continues to play with you, but I'm so happy that she has agreed to play with us and she's going to have two more Saturdays of yeah, I should have written it down. Well, it's all in the playlist on the front page. And then I think it's February 6th, she's going to start with Long Time Gone by Jen Kenwell. Kingwell, I love her quilts. And when she suggested it, I'm like going, yes. To me, this is a sampler that is right up my alley. I wish I had thought of it. It kind of reminds me of when I steal the old fashioned wild quilts like that and then make it into new stuff steals a bad word but you know what I mean I just love it it just gets it going then we have two bundles if you want to just freshen up your stash and you guys I do y'all I do <laughs> I do that a lot when I start a new quilt 
I might go to the quilt store and buy, I don't know how much fabric. Then I go to my support system, which is my stash here. So Kristen and Dee put together two bundles and the girls are, the ladies are cutting it. And I walk into it at work and it makes my heart go crazy because it's so wonderful. So this is the contemporary version right here. And then here is the traditional ver I wonder if I could keep that up, if I could bring up the other, if I could slide that over, I'll bet I could. We're, we're, we're gonna, and then here is the traditional version. Honestly, if I were rich, I'd buy both, but I don't wanna say that because they might kill me down there. They're just so fresh, they're happy, they're all of that. So you shall be starting that in a couple weeks. So if you want, you might want to order those. What else do we have going on, John? Not Apple Web Plus. Apple Web Plus is for, uh, for raw edge. It's for raw edge, and we'll get into that later. I'm being very methodical on how I'm taking you through this stuff. Apple Web is for raw edge applique. We're focusing on finished applique right now. Print and piece fuse light for hand embroidery. Somebody suggesting it or they're saying, can you? He left me. For hand embroidery, I wouldn't use print and piece fuse light. Mm -mm. I would use something like our, I probably would use fabric prep. Yeah, I'd probably use fabric prep. Can you? Can you? Yeah, print and piece, mm -mm, not for that. So, Italy! You know, my daughter, and I'll, I'll got to get going, my daughter got to spend a year in Florence for college, and man, the travel bug just bit her you know where. So, long live Italia! <laughs> so, so, okay, Steal Like an Artist by Austin Cleone. It's a good thing. Hmm. All right, so what I'm going to share with you on Wednesday is there's another way to do finished applique. And it's actually, we use a uh, cutaway for that and you, you're kind of pillowcasing it. And so that's real cool. Here comes another one. Ask about the Wiki's stable stuff. How does that relate to any of this? I don't know. You know, if you've got Ricky's... Oh, what you're talking about. What? Oh, John know? just said, does Ricky's stable stuff work with this? I don't know. Because obviously I'm using my products. But if you have stable stuff... I would try it. I don't think it has quite the hand to be able to roll the fabric on. I think it might collapse on you. However, that said, I think on Wednesday, it might be a really good solution. So he's got some here, I'll play with it. Uh, yeah, I think on Wednesday, you might wanna try a stable stuff with that. You can use a shot glass with a moist paper towel at the bottom. Shoot, I, 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 I got excited with that shot glass part. <laughs> so today, at my mom's house, everybody has gotten over COVID ex except my mom. At the other house, they lost one person, but I'm gonna go get her stuff. And fortunately, it's not a lot of stuff, but I that's on my to-do list today, as well as, yeah, a couple other little errands. But I tell you what, people, I was so tired after those kids left. <laughs> It was so good. They love each other so much. I'm very, very blessed. Hey, you guys have y'all, people, my friends, have a great rest of the day. I'm trying. I'm trying.